Aloha hockey fans and welcome to the Blue Note Fan Report. I'm your host, Guy, the Hawaii Blues fan. You gotta know that I'm bleeding blue with you. Today is a very special edition of the Blue Note Fan Report because today is my 100th video. It's my 85th Blue Note Fan Report for my 100th video counting my lives. I'm excited. I'm happy. It's time to celebrate. I'm over 300 subscribers. You guys got to keep helping me. I'm on a push. Push for 500. Need to get to that. The next mark I'm trying to get to is uh, 325. Need a oh, 15, 14, 15, somewhere around there. Somebody dropped off yesterday. But that's neither here nor there. You know what it is time for? It is time for to get into the game twos. That's right, the game twos, man. And uh, these series are tight, and they were going to be tight. Um, there's only one series that has really surprised me in the way it's gone. But again, sometimes that's going to happen. But the series are good. So, hockey fans, how about we get into? So, hockey fans, <clears throat> let's get into our conference semifinals. Our first matchup we're going to do is Boston and the Columbus Blue Jackets. Columbus stole a game in Boston, and for a while there, it looked like Boston had this one wrapped up. Um, Boston scores in the first. It's one nothing. Going into the second, though, Columbus doesn't want to leave it at that. The bread man and her parents scores a goal. Uh, David Pasternak of uh, Boston uh, takes that lead back, and then the bread man does it again, ties it up. 2-2 two -two at the end of the second. It goes into the third, no goals. Goes into the first overtime, no goals. Goes into a second overtime, and Matt Deshane is able to pop one in. Boston is uh, evens the series back up at one. And this series is a little tighter than I thought it would be. I had a feeling that Boston was the better team and that they were a Stanley Cup contender. Uh, thought that they would take this in five. I don't believe that anymore. This has been two very close games. Um, this one could easily go seven and surprise everyone. Now, if it does go seven, I think it takes whoever wins this, makes it a lot harder for them to get to the Stanley Cup. That's my thought process. On semifinal number one. Now let's move on down the bracket to semifinal number two. The second semifinal is between the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Islanders. And right now, this series is a pretty big surprise. Uh, the Hurricanes were able to go up two to nothing on the Islanders, who have lost their first two games. I mean, remember the Islanders swept Pittsburgh, and now they're uh, down 0 and 2. Now there were two pivotal plays in this game. For each team, the first one, uh, Hurricanes goalie Peter Morazic left with an apparent lower body injury, possibly a knee strain or a torn knee ligament. He was in a lot of pain. He was upset. Um, their backup comes in and just shuts the door. Matthew Bazell scored um, early in the game to break Morazic's um, shutout streak. Second longest in playoff history to the NHL's Kevin Weeks from also the Hurricanes. Pretty interesting there. Now, there was something that happened in this game. The second play was a disallowed goal. And we've had this incident come up before. And this is one where I understand the rule, but I think they got it wrong. Uh, Cows, one of the, I can't remember his first name is skating down and kicks the puck. He's, he's beyond the goal. He kicks the puck towards the goal. It was a kick. It was a distinct kicking motion. I get that. But as he kicks the puck, Carolina's relief goalie, Macaroni, Macaroni I think is his name, kind of turns and lifts his leg up, and the puck goes under his leg, and then Macar it hits Macaroni, and he turns again, and he puts the puck in the net. Well, you know, at this point, there's an issue with this rule. And this is the second or third time this year we've seen that. And we've seen this with the Blues. 
any other instant where the goalie puts the puck in the net, it counts. Well, here with this, this is the same issue as the, the referee, where the puck hit the referee, it travels in a straight line, it doesn't go in. Okay, no issue. But the goalie, Longo, misplays it and puts it in the net. Here, the kick puck could have gone anywhere. It's still a live play. McInerney misplays it and puts it in the net. At this point, the kick no longer matters to me. Same as deflecting off the referee. Why? Because the, the goalie puts, the, puts a live puck in the net. Puts a live puck in the net in any other instance and it counts. This is a problem. The NHL needs to correct this. Goalies who misplay pucks that put them in the net should count. They absolutely should count. The play was still live. As long as the play is live, and there's there's something that changes the path of the puck, the play should count. Now, had he kicked it and it went straight into the net, didn't touch anybody, didn't do anything, or had he kicked it at the net, and it bounced off the goalie and went in, this, I'm okay with that not being a goal. Because if the goalie wasn't there, the chances of it going in the net are 100%. That's the difference. The chance of this puck going in the net were zero until McInerney put it in the net. That's when it should count. That's my take. So this series is 2-0. Um, it, it's a surprise. The Hurricanes were able to get two goals. Fogel and Niedermeyer both scored in the third, early in the third period, and New York just couldn't solve McInerney. Surprising result. Uh, the Islanders are now going to Carolina. I do look for them to rebound here. This is not a sweep series. I can very easily see this going back to New York 2-2. So from that point, let's move on over to, say, my final number three, the Avalanche and the Sharks. Now this series here is the definition of what we like to call in the old days a barn burner. Uh, these two teams surprisingly are very evenly matched and they are fighting each other tooth and nail. Now a lot of people felt like San Jose steamrolled the avalanche and that was all on the uh, San Jose in the first game. The avalanche came back and, and I had a feeling they would. I, I always thought that the avalanche are the better team and I had picked them in five, and I'm going to kind of stick with that pick. Now, uh, Vander Kane scored in the first, makes it one to nothing, and it kind of looks like that's the way it's going to go, that this is going to go San Jose's way. But then in the second, the barn burner starts. Uh, Landegog and uh, I can't say Barn Barnacle, whatever, both score. Um, McKinnon scores in the in the third. Uh, Niedermeyer, our Nito, scores in the, uh, also in the third. Um, Brett Burns scores a late goal to make it 4-3 to make it closer than what it really was. Uh, the, the Avalanche went through and showed what they were. Uh, showed that they were not just going to lay down, that they were better than a uh, wild card team. They're playing very good hockey, and they're surprising me because I had thought game one, when they got shut out by the Flames, that they were just happy to be there. Well, maybe they decided they weren't just happy to be there, and they turned things around. Uh, they're a good, solid team, and I still think that they're going to get out of this out of this round. This series now moves to Colorado, but it gets an extra no, it doesn't get an extra day off. The uh, New York Islander series, or no, the Boston series gets the extra day off. Beep 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 beep. beep. Brain's going freaking ballistic. Okay. So now that we talked about that, this series being 1-1, let's move up, 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 up the bracket to the Blues versus the Stars. Well, Game 2 in St. Louis definitely did not go the way that myself or most Blues fans wanted. And after the game, a lot of Blues fans were jumping off of bridges again. You know what? 
first thing I got to say is I'm reminded of, and his name just slipped me, the Green Bay quarterback. Um, oh, dummy. Come on, shake the, shake the brain, shake the brain, shake the brain, shake the brain. Rodgers! And the discount double check. Aaron Rodgers in a, like the third game or fourth game of the season, he looks into the camera and he tells the reporters and all the fans, look, R-A-L-A-X. Just relax. They turned around and won the Super Bowl that year. Blues fans, take a chill pill and relax. Very few of you thought this was going four games. Everyone thinks six to seven. Very few thought that the Blues were going to come out and just destroy them. Getting the split is not the worst thing. Now, there are some things about this game that weren't very good. Uh, Dallas did come out and control this game. Dallas played much better. With that being said, in game one, a lot of people thought Dallas played better in game one than they did in game two. Well, the Blues didn't play better in game one than they did game two, and they won game one. The right thing to look here is the Blues are probably the better team, and when they put it together, Dallas, watch out, you don't have a chance. They had a couple of bad games, and they're going on the road. They are a perfect 3-0 on the road this year. Again, that doesn't say much about Winnipeg. But that's what they are, 3-0 and on the road. Let's see what they're going to do in Dallas. Now, a couple of things to think about this game. Uh, they're, Dallas' is second line, they went to town. Rope Hintz had two goals, though one was an empty netter late. Kind of doesn't matter. Uh, Miko Heskigen, if I'm saying that wrong, oh well, I'm, not, I'm doing my best. Gets another goal, makes it 2-0. Pareko fires a snap, uh, uh, just as awesome slap shot. Need to keep doing that. Makes it 2-1. Then Dallas scores just a few short seconds later to make it 3-1. Uh, second, no scoring. The second period is when the Achilles handles for the Blues. They really need to figure out how in the second period during that long shift to make it work. They have to. Uh, Jaden Schwartz makes it 3-2. For the most of the game and then we get towards the end of the third period and this is where the controversy hits dallas challenged a goal and lost timeout gone blues are on a power play six on four power play and all of a sudden st louis boy ben bishop has an equipment issue the ref stopped the game and allow him to go to the bench to get his equipment fixed. <clears throat> Wrong answer, Arpoc. The rules state that the backup goalie has to come in. That the game shall not be stopped while the equipment is fixed. That shouldn't have happened. First, there's, there's number one. And then, during a rush, Ben knocks the net off. Oops. You know what? That needs to start being looked at. Pushing side to side. What a goalie. That's how goalies use the post. To push side to side. Should never knock the net off. It's when they push straight back. That the net gets knocked off. If these goalies are doing that in a motion. That is a penalty. And it needs to be called. Or better yet. Penalty shot needs to be allowed. This is happening way too much, and goalies are getting away with it. Dallas essentially got three timeouts during that game. All right? Uh, I've talked about it before, officiating in the – well, let's look at the whole bracket now. I've talked about this before. Officiating in the NHL is absolutely horrible, and in these playoffs, there's a spotlight on it, so you see a lot more of the bad plays. It, it, it's it's got to get fixed. The NHL, you have to take a round turn on this. You have to stop the referees from, from making these bad mistakes. You need a fourth official that is on off the ice that can oversee everything and call down and say, nope, you're doing it wrong. Do it this way now. Stop these. This game, that game should have not have been stopped. It was when the Blues were rushing. It took, it took the momentum away from the Blues. The referees, again, 
control that game. And it's happening a lot. A lot in every series. Well, Blues fans, I had said it earlier. This is my special 100th episode. So I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Because I got a fan of the game, tattoo of the game, pet of the game, and my challenge. So, stay tuned. So we can be about the fan. Okay, Blues fans, in my last episode, I decided to issue a challenge to all of you. Oh, well, I should say hockey fans. I decided to issue a challenge to all of you. However, my sound was really bad, and you may not have been able to get to that point, or maybe you didn't watch it. Don't know. It happens. But look here. This is what I got going. Uh, Jason Howe is the coordinator, Midwest coordinator, of K-9s on the front line. And their mission, this 501C, this nonprofit's mission, is to get veterans service dogs. No cost to the veteran. I want to get one vet, one service pet. No, they're not pets, but it sounds good. One vet, one pet. It cost this organization $3,500 to get one vet, one pet. I am challenging all of you to donate on my page, the Hawaii Blue, or pardon me, the Blue Note Fan Report on Facebook, my page, the Blue Note Fan Report. See a couple here. There's a donate there. There's actually a couple of them. I'm going to delete all but one of them. Right now, I've only got 10 bucks. Come on. Let's make a push for it. I want this to run through the playoffs. As long as the Blues are in the playoffs, we're going to get one vet. One pet. Now, I've talked to Jason on this, and he has guaranteed me that that vet will be a Blues fan. So we're going to get one Blues fan veteran that suffers from PTSD and depression, a service dog. Uh, this episode is a little long, so I can't put a video on it, but I will start putting videos, and I'll put links to their videos. You'll see the eye pop up, or if, if you're... On a phone, touch your phone, you see that little eye? Press on that eye, and it'll show you some links to some other videos. Let's help canines on the front line get one vet, one pet. Well, I haven't done a fan of the game segment for a while, but it's time. This is my 100th episode, and for my special, I have a Canadian hockey fan. Well, Canadian blues fan, almost all Canadians are hockey fans. You know that. Stereotype. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, back. I was perusing the groups and I found this picture. This is Frank Henry. Frank is from Vancouver Island in British Columbia. As a kid, he grew up a Canucks fan. Makes sense. However, he also played goalie. And one of the goalies that he really liked or he that he was drawn to was Mike Liu. Yes, I remember Lee. And the old pads and the old style. And he was one of them. When you heard his name, you just knew you were going to get a good game out of him. He, from a distance, he followed Mike Lute. He followed Brett Hull, Adam Oates, Brendan Shanahan, and all of that. And he just kind of kept it. And then something happened in 2013. Vladimir Tarashenko scores his first two goals on his first two shots against the Canucks. I think it was against him. But that was in that Frank was sold. Frank is a Blues fan. Right? Now, with that, I get a pet of the game. And you know why I get a pet of the game? You see this big beast here? This is an Italian master. Frank and his wife went out to look at this puppy and fell in love. And you know what? One name, and one name only came to mind. This it's Tarashenko, or Tank for short. And Tank is a blues dog. They even got the number 91 for Tarashenko tattooed in his ear as a uh, locator. Uh, I think it's cool. Uh, Tank is beautiful. Now, I'm not a big fan of big dogs, but Tank, you're just, you're a sexy dog, my friend. Sexy, sexy dog. I love you. Um, Frank and Tank. I got to thank you 
for being on the 100th video by the Hawaii Blues fan as my fan and pet of the game. Thank you both. Well, I also have a special tattoo from Down Under. Haven't had a tattoo for a while. I've kind of been saving this one. Uh, this is an interesting one. Not for what it is, but where it's from and who it's on. This tattoo here is similar to ones we've had before. The blue note, breaking through the skin, the blue blood, um, great coloring. It, it, it's really just special in the way it's done. But however, while you might say, oh, but you've had tattoos like that before. Not when they were from and done in Australia. This one is on Jared Doggy Powder. That's his nickname, not mine. And he's from Victoria, Australia. He is big friends with Julie Ladd. Uh, she runs the season ticket holder group on Facebook. Uh, she got a hold of him, said, hey, can we use your tattoo? He said, absolutely. Uh, and here it is. Where it got done, I don't know. Don't care. Who did it? Sorry, don't know. It was probably done in Australia. I'm 90% sure it was done in Australia. And it's an Australian blues note. What's not to love? Jared, thank you for letting me feature your tattoo on my 100th video. Blues fans, today's game three. It's an important game, but don't go jumping off the bridge. Remember, to this point in the playoff, the Blues have never not led in a series. They've been tied. They haven't been behind. The Blues are a good team. They're a strong team, and we are going to put it together. I am absolutely, absolutely behind the Blues this game, but knowing how my predictions have been lately, and if you follow me on Twitter, you know how bad they've been, I'm picking the Dallas Stars to win 2-1. to one. You guys know what that means. Hockey fans, love you all. Please keep watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Put your thumbs in the air and help me reach the 500 subscriber mark. Aloha, mahalo, and you got to know that the Hawaii Blues fan is bleeding blue with you. Oh, when the blues go marching in. Oh, I want to be in that number When the blues go marching in Oh, when the blues go marching in Oh, when the blues go marching in Oh, I want to be in that number When the blues go marching in Oh, when the blues go marching in Oh, when the blues go marching in Oh, I want to be in that number When the blues go marching in